Hello, my name is Renzo Mondaini. I'd like to tell you about an electrolytic cold fusion experiment I carried out recently, in which I was able to demonstrate the transmutation of one element into another. Very large quantities resulted from the experiment, and the process is unequivocal. This reaction is one of the reactions, one of about 17 reactions, low energy nuclear reactions, which Louis Curvran had suggested might be possible. I was able to successfully carry out one of his hypothetical reactions by simple electrolysis at 12 volts. This reaction is oxygen plus oxygen equals sulfur. As you can see on the periodic table of the elements, oxygen has an atomic number of 8. So if we add two oxygen atoms together we get sulfur, which has an atomic number of 16. This makes it sound simple. But as scientists well know, it is a very difficult reaction to carry out, as it requires an enormous amount of energy. In fact, if we look at the atomic weight of oxygen, which is just under 16, and we multiply this by 2, we should get slightly less than 32. However, sulfur has an atomic weight of 32 point something, so there is a small difference. According to scientists, this small difference in atomic weight is in fact an enormous energy gap and for this reason a huge amount of energy would be required to obtain an atom of sulfur from two oxygen atoms and arrive at an atomic weight of 32.066. However, this can happen even if theory would have us believe that it is not possible. I carried out the experiment using roughly one glass of distilled water to which I added about half a teaspoon of potassium carbonate. I used some old type rigid copper wire as electrodes. The wire has a diameter of about one millimeter. At first I thought I would simply get normal electrolysis hydrogen bubbles at the negative electrode and oxygen bubbles at the positive electrode. But this didn't happen when I turned on the power. I did see hydrogen bubbles at the negative electrode, but there were no bubbles at the positive electrode. I was very shocked by this, and so I used a magnifying glass to take a closer look at what was happening at the electrode, and I noticed that blue-green crystals were forming on this positive copper electrode. These crystals were insoluble as they were not dissolving in the water but forming in increasing size on the surface of the electrode. At first I thought the reaction was simply oxidation of the copper but I knew that copper only produces two types of oxides one black and the other brown but here I had insoluble green crystals. I verified which green colored salt could have been produced from copper and I discovered that it was copper sulfite which has the chemical formula CuSO3. I couldn't find any explanation for the presence of the sulfur as there was no sulfur present at the beginning. As the electrolysis continues, the water becomes light blue in color. It becomes this color. It shows the presence in solution of copper sulfate, CuSO4. There is also sulfur in this formula, but we don't know where it comes from, as it wasn't there in the basic elements. I used purified water from a pharmacy, as distilled water is expensive. I used pure potassium carbonate and copper wire with minimal impurities, which is obtained by extrusion. And if this copper contained more than a certain level of impurity, it would break during extrusion. 
So this quantity of sulfur can be explained theoretically as two oxygen atoms transforming into an atom of sulfur. In order to be sure that this is what happened, a chemical analysis had to be carried out. So had the analysis carried out in a laboratory of both the light blue liquid and of the resulting substance after evaporation. This was shown to be a mix of potassium carbonate and copper sulfate. I also had the leftover solid residue analyzed to see if there was any sulfur present. This was mostly copper powder. This is the result. 6,800 mg per kilo of sulfur was found in the liquid sample and there was an, a concentration of 53,000 mg per kilo of sulfur in the dark solid sample I showed you. These are enormous quantities which have only one possible explanation. Now I'll show you how I carried out the experiment and then you will be able to repeat the experiment yourselves and analyze the products of the reaction. The laboratory where I carried out the experiment charged 32 euros plus VAT for each analyst, so it's not very expensive. As you can see, the negative electrode is on the left and the positive on the right. The electrodes are immersed in a potassium carbonate solution. Now I'll turn on the power and you can see the hydrogen which forms little bubbles on the left but there are no bubbles forming on the right. Instead we can see green crystals forming on the surface of the positive electrode. These crystals don't dissolve in the water. They are copper sulfide crystals. Along with the copper sulfide crystals, a small quantity of copper sulfate forms. In fact, as the experiment continues, the water takes on a light blue tinge. But the most evident effect is the formation of these green crystals on the surface of the positive electrode. They are insoluble and continue to grow on the surface of the electrode which doesn't emit any bubbles. On the other hand, the negative electrode on the left is emitting hydrogen bubbles due to electrolysis of the water. The oxygen, however, which is now going towards the positive electrode on the right, merges together to form a sulfur atom, which bonds with one copper atom and three oxygen atoms, resulting in copper sulfite in the form of these crystals. It is also possible that a molecule with four oxygen atoms instead of three could form. And so in this case we, got, we get copper sulfate, CuSO4, which causes the water to have this light blue tinge. As we speak, many oxygen atoms are merging together to form sulfur which in turn form the copper sulfide deposited on the surface of the electrodes.
As you can see, there is no formation of oxygen bubbles on the electrode. The green substance forming on the electrode is not copper oxide, as there are two types of copper oxide, one black and the other brown. As you can see, the crystals are quite large. They protrude from the electrode and they do not dissolve in the solution. At the start, the current was about half an amp, and now it's about 10,000 amps, with a voltage of 12 volts. As you can see, the water is already taking on the light blue tinge due to the presence of copper sulfate. This copper sulfate contains atoms of sulfur, which were not present in the original solution or in the electrode. If we illuminate the electrodes, we can clearly see the green color of the crystals. It's a bluish green color because the crystals are a mix of copper sulfite and copper sulfate. The sulfite is not soluble and so remains visible. However, the copper sulfate dissolves in water and so shortly the water will start to appear light blue in color. After an hour of electrolysis, we can see the light blue color of the water, which I was only able to obtain by cleaning the crystals off the electrode, as the crystals cause the positive electrode to be isolated electrically from the solution. This is how we get the formation of new crystals, and of copper sulfate, which is blue and colors the water. The copper sulfite falls to the bottom. As you can see, there are deposits on the bottom containing copper sulfite crystals. If I continue to clean, there is contact between the electrode and the liquid and electrolysis starts again. As you can see from this certificate, the analyst of the liquid confirms the total sulfur content to be 6,800 mg per kilo. In the next image we can see the certificate of the solid part, which confirms the presence of 53,000 mg of sulfur per kilo.